It was right before I transferred into UCLA. I started getting hand pain. So I went to see a doctor about it and then they could feel like a small lump. About a week later, they gave me a phone call and mentioned the words cancer to me. For a long time, I was really depressed and then you accept it, I guess. And then you try and just make the most out of the time you have now. What Daniel Apodaca didn't know was that just across UCLA's campus, a leading cancer researcher was working on a new clinical trial 10 years in the making. It was an experimental treatment that reprograms a patient's own immune system to wage war on cancer. That doctor just needed patient one. The only one that I feel maybe that might have been there for a while is it's like right here. It's my role to treat people that have no other options. I've taken the cases that others have given up on and tried to develop a new treatment for those patients. And that's where we push the limits of science. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Good, how are you, doctor? What's going on today? Eh, nothing much, I feel good. At 24, Daniel was diagnosed with epithelioid sarcoma, a cancer of the soft tissues. When the cancer spread to his lungs, doctors told him he was out of options. Then he met Dr. Rebus and signed on as the clinical trial's first patient. He would receive their experimental cancer immunotherapy treatment. What exactly is immunotherapy? It's using our own body to fight cancer. The immune system is our built-in defense against sickness, and T cells are the soldiers on the front line. They're a type of white blood cell that seeks and destroys disease. But cancer is like an undercover agent. T cells don't recognize the enemy in their midst, leaving the body vulnerable. Cancer immunotherapy treatments can boost the immune system, so it reacts to cancer the way that it does to other disease, curing the body from the inside. One of those treatments is called CAR-T therapy. Doctors genetically modify T cells so that they recognize cancer and attack it. But there's room for improvement. We have realized that the immune system cells that we give back, they have a limited lifespan. They work for a period of time. Once that batch of modified T cells dies, the immune system loses its cancer-fighting superpower. But what if our own bodies could keep producing cancer fighters long after the first therapy? That's where Dr. Rebus's research comes in. Bone marrow stem cells are the key. They are the special factories that make new T cells. The innovation? Rather than just genetically modified T cells, modify the bone marrow stem cells that make them. Upgrade the factory. The result, in theory, is a lifetime supply of cancer-fighting T cells and, hopefully, a cancer-proof immune system. With time, that bone marrow would continuously making T cells that would then get out and be fully functioning. So that would allow to give long-term protection against cancer. So is this where you had most of your classes? Yeah, they're all in this building. I think Daniel is still enrolled at UCLA's film school. He says dropping out wasn't an option because he has health insurance through the university. He was supposed to graduate with his class this semester. What's it like for you? You know, you just ran into a bunch of your friends who are graduating in mm. just a couple days. It's, I mean, I'm happy to see them all moving on, you know, but because of this, I had to miss a bunch of different classes. I couldn't take the full course load that I wanted to take. Hello. After several weeks of intense treatment in the hospital, Daniel received his upgraded cancer-fighting cells on April 24th. Doctors called it his second birthday. But now, Daniel has to wait and hope this experimental treatment works. Immunotherapy treatments, including CAR T cell therapy, come with risks and side effects. It will be two years before Dr. Rebus can definitively say if the modified bone marrow cells are doing their job. If that doesn't happen, if the bone marrow stem cell, if they don't kick in, mm -hmm. what's the next course of action? I really don't know. I mean, I go back to like my bucket list, I guess, and start doing things that I want to enjoy and live my life to the best I can. This is basically, in terms of science, is like one of the best shots I have. If the therapy does work for Daniel, it will still be years before the entire clinical trial process is complete and ready for FDA review. And even then, this customized treatment won't be an option for many cancer patients. I feel really lucky. 
because I know a lot of other people that have the same type of cancer as me and they don't get this option at all. I'm lucky enough to experience a lot of things. I've fallen in love, I've met people, I've had crazy experiences. I didn't get to travel and see the world as much as I wanted to, but I feel like I lived a fairly good life so far. Recently, Daniel ticked one more thing off his bucket list, his first trip to Europe. He's visiting his girlfriend in Spain. When you put so much time and energy into something, and also you add to that that someone's life is on the line, it really, I would imagine, would put a lot of pressure on the success of this. Yes, or you're not going the easy route. And sometimes it requires doing very complicated things like genetically modifying bone marrow stem cells, but it's doable. Hopefully that's what it is, is like I become the golden child for this amazing scientific movement.